Hamas, is, as we all know, are savages, and children released by Hamas are now telling the horrors of their captivity. According to family accounts reported in the Jerusalem Post, Hamas terrorists put children on the back of motorcycles and placed their legs against the hot exhaust pipes to create burns. The purpose of the burns was to help mark the children, ensuring they could properly be identified. Children were also repeatedly drugged. Israel Defense Forces International Spokesperson Major Duran Spielman joins me. Good evening, sir. Hi, Greta. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Sir, can you tell me during this um, pause, um, what does the IDF doing in, like in Gaza? What, uh, I know that there's no exchange of gunfire and there's defense if they fire at you, but tell me what the IDF is doing. Well, we're not sitting on our laurels. We are well aware, as uh, Rabbi Leiter just said, and as you echo, that this has to move forward. It's, it's clear, both from the prime minister to the chief of staff, down to the average troop, at the end of the line that they are going to moving into an offensive position at some point in the near future with the goal of defeating Hamas. And so all of these days that have gone by that have been useful in getting our people back home are also being used for training, Greta, Intel, figure on our ops, being more precise in what we're going to be doing in the future so that when we enter this next stage, it's going to go hopefully more quickly and more effectively to reaching every Hamas terrorist where they are. We're training. They're not just sitting there listening to music. And when we do get that green light, everyone is committed in Israel to carrying this through until the very end. Of course, you've got uh, the, the leaders of Hamas who are worth billions of dollars in Qatar living uh, very well and cheering what happened October 7th. I've seen the video. And then, of course, you've got Iran that is funding Hamas. So it is quite a task uh, in front of you. Well, I, you know, you mentioned a very good point because the leadership of Hamas and Hamas in general, they are not only despicable, they are, actually, they are actually also cowardly, meaning they launched an attack on people who could not defend themselves. They ran back into Gaza and hid behind their own people who cannot defend themselves. Now we're hearing from other worldly sources, as you've mentioned, that we need to be more precise in Southern Gaza. Well, when they hear that, when they hear that people in Southern Gaza aren't going to have to move out of the way, Hamas says, oh, let's go beneath their homes because they'll protect us. Meaning this whole distant way of, of managing the army is just endemic. If Hamas is truly, of course, they are despicable, but if they have a shred a shred of dignity, what they should immediately be doing, and this would solve the problem, is leaving their civilian areas and going out in the open and actually fighting the IDF if they actually believe what they're what they're actually saying. And then we can move forward and southern Gaza will not look like northern Gaza if that actually takes place. Are there any civilians who are saying, civilians in, the, in Gaza, who are saying to you, look, we're so glad you're getting rid of Hamas and we know, we're, you know that uh, they have been basically ter terrorizing us for the last 13 years, although I know they've been supplying food and water and a lot of other things because they get money from Iran. But are there any civilians that are having sort of second thoughts about Hamas inside Gaza? We have begun to heard these voices. Again, you have to be very brave to be able to speak against Hamas. These people have been living under intense Hamas rule for 16 years. And anyone who spoke against Hamas, and we saw this in 2007, when people began to speak against Hamas's takeover of the Gaza Strip, it was a very simple punishment. They brought them up to the 10th floor of the building and pushed them right off to the edge. Hundreds and hundreds of people were pushed off the edge of 10-story buildings in order to show the population this is what's going to happen if you have free speech. However, what we do know is we've heard from ins inside accounts that the Palestinian people in Gaza, when they actually saw us at the near the hospital in the center of Gaza, they realized that this hegemony of Hamas is actually not foolproof. The IDF is coming. They listened to us. They began to head to southern Gaza. They spoke with our troops. I think when they see Hamas is absolutely at the brink and about to disappear, the stories of those people are going to come out, and we're going to see that fear transformed into hope. But they are living under terror as we speak. Not only for us do we need to finish the job, but also for them. Major Duran Spielman, thank you, sir. Good luck, sir. Thank you so much, Greta.